Welcome to a new set of Onshape video tutorials at Bryanston School. This is for the C year group completing their skateboard projects. There's going to be a series of videos that show you how to draw the deck, the other components, and then put them together as an assembly. This video assumes that you've already got an Onshape account created. If not, follow one of the other tutorial videos on how to set that up. Uh, I have logged into my account here and I'm going to start off by creating a folder and a document to put my parts into. So under the Create tab on the top left hand side, I'm going to left click and I'm going to left click on folder and I'm going to call this Skateboard Project 2022. So I will just click on create, that will create the folder and you can see the folder here. I can left click on the folder, go in there and there are no uh, documents there at the moment so let's create a document for that. So again left click on, click on create and this time left click on document and Skateboard 2022. Click on OK and that will create the document in the folder and then it will actually launch the modeling part of the software and you can see that we've got the title up here. So we could change that later on if we wanted to. Down on the left hand uh, corner we can see the, the tabs with Part Studio uh, and Assembly. We're not going to worry about the Assembly at the moment uh, but we are going to start in the first Part Studio and we're going to create the first component. So we're going to start off with the basic shape of the deck of the skateboard. So to do this we're going to see something a little bit unusual in that we're not going to start off drawing on one of the planes that we've already got. We're going to actually create a new work plane. So I can hover the mouse pointer over the front work plane and I can right click on there and from that I can left click on offset plane. Now the default if I just hold the right mouse button down and spin the screen around, you can see is it sort of sends it off to the to the left or sort of out of the screen, if you like, at a distance of 25 millimeters. We actually want a distance of 265 millimeters. So we're going to change that distance to 265. Press Enter. And if I just use the scroll wheel on the mouse, I can zoom out and I can see that we've got plane one over here, which is what we want. So I'm going to left click on the tick to say that I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to hold the right mouse button down and spin the model space around a little bit. And then I'm going to hover the mouse pointer over plane one. I'm going to right click and I'm going to then left click on new sketch. Uh, I'm going to press the N key, N for normal, which will then spin the model around so that I'm facing down on that actual work plane on plane one. So I'm going to be drawing on plane one uh, but we can also see that we've got the uh, the top plane here and the right plane here. We can see the edges of those and of course the front plane is cut hidden behind plane one as well. I'm going to use the rectangular tool but I'm going to pick the center rectangle tool. So left click on the arrow to extend the options, left click on the option that I want and I'm going to draw from the center. So I'm going to left click on the origin to place the center of the rectangle and then just drag that out and then left click. It doesn't matter how big or small I draw that because I'm now going to dimension that. So I'm going to use the dimension tool. So the double headed arrow is the dimension tool. I'm going to left click on the top line, move up a bit and then left click again. And I'm going to change that to 190, 190 millimeters. So type it in and press enter. And I'm going to do the same on the right side and I'm going to change this to 10 millimeters. So typing 10 on the keyboard, hit enter, and that's the profile that I want. Now I'm not going to do anything with that sketch. In the past when we've done some modeling in on shape, we've then applied a feature to that sketch. We're not going to do that straight away. So I'm just going to left click on the tick to say I'm happy with the sketch. The sketch is complete and if I hold the right mouse button down and spin that around we can see that the sketch is over there kind of floating in space uh, on plane one. The next sketch we're going to draw is going to be on the right work plane. So I'm going to hover over the right work plane, right click, left click on new sketch and again press N to view normal to. Uh, now I'm going to be working over here so I can, I'm going to just use the scroll wheel to zoom in a little bit but I want to be able to see the origin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a couple of lines. So I'm going to use the line tool and I'm going to line up 
with the top work plane and the middle of the, the plane that we created and the sketch that we created in the last step and I'm going to left click and come out making sure it's horizontal left click and then I'm going to come up here and left click again now it doesn't matter about the sizes at the moment we'll dimension those in a moment uh, now you'll see that it wants to put another line in I'm just going to press the escape key and that's that line completed so let's put some dimensions in so first of all I'm going to dimension from the origin to the top of this line so I'm going to bring that over here and I want that to be 55 millimeters and I also want to dimension from the origin to that line but instead of a, a vertical measurement I want a horizontal measurement so I'm going to move uh, the dimension around until I get a horizontal line I'm going to left click to place the dimension and then I want that to be 390 390 millimeters so I type that in on the keyboard and press enter and I'll just use the scroll wheel to uh, zoom out a little bit so it's not being covered up by the by the sketch box finally I want to dimension the length of this part of the line so I'm going to click on this end of our diagonal line and this end of our diagonal line and again I want this dimension to be horizontal not following the profile of the line but horizontal so I'm going to left click down here to place that and I want that to be 110 millimeters so type in 110 hit enter the last thing I need to do on this sketch is I want to create a radius in here so I'm going to use the fillet tool so this is the fillet tool I'm going to left click on the fillet tool um, to select it but actually I want to put a particular dimension in there um, so left click on the fillet and you can see that it puts a dimension in the default is a 5 I don't want it to be 5 so I'm going to click on double click on there to select it and I'm going to change that to 65 so 65 and press enter and you can see it almost gets rid of all of that straight line but not quite that okay which is fine that's what we want it to do now again I'm happy with this sketch I'm not going to do anything else with this sketch so I'm going to left click on the tick to say I'm happy with the sketch so if I just spin this around we can see on plane one we've got our uh, center point rectangle and on the right plane coming out the center of that as if it's kind of piercing it like a spear or something uh, we have uh, this other sketch what we're now going to do is we're going to sweep our rectangular sketch along the path of this line so we're going to use the sweep tool which is the one that looks a bit like a, a drain pipe so left click on sweep and so what face or sketch region we're going to sweep well we want sketch one so I'm going to select sketch one and then I'm going to move into the sweep path box and I'm going to select sketch two and you can see that it's taken that rectangle and it's kind of pushed it along to create a solid part uh, along that sketch which is exactly what we want so I'm going to left click on there now the next thing I want to do is to put the curve on the edge so this is actually one end of the skateboard the rest of the skateboard is going to be filled in the gap and we're going to have this end repeated over the other side so I'm just going to spin it around so I can hover the mouse over this flat surface I'm going to right click and then left click on new sketch and I'm going to press the N key to view normal onto that again so I've got this flat surface the first thing I want to do is to create uh, a line on this edge this edge and this edge to so the top and the bottom edges as we're looking at it and the left hand edge and I'm going to use the uh, use or project convert tool which is this one so left click on there then I can left click on that line and hopefully you can see it's gone a darker black compared to this edge left click on that one and left click on that one and that's converted those three lines into uh, sketch lines now or those three edges into sketch lines the next thing I want to do is I want to put in a spline for the curve so I'm going to use the spline tool which is this one I'm going to make sure that I start off on this edge where it meets the sort of the line of the curve if you like so I'm going to left click there I'm going to come to about this point here um, and put a point I'm going to come across a bit further and put another point and then the final point that I want is going to be in the middle of that line so you can see it just highlights it with an orange box and I'm going to double left click to finish it now I can play around with this curve but the first thing I want to do is set a constraint between this edge and the edge of this curve and I want them to be tangential 
So I'm going to use uh, the tangent tool. So here's the tangent constraint tool. Now, if you're on a slightly smaller screen, you may find that these constraints are hidden in um, a menu a bit like the rectangle tool is hidden under an arrow. So you may need to use the arrow uh, to open up the options. I'm going to use the tangent tool. I'm going to click on this line, and then I'm going to click on the curve, and you see it jumped around. I'm going to do exactly the same over here. So I'm going to click on the vertical line, and I'm going to click on this end of the spline, and you'll see that it jumps around. I'm now going to deselect that because I want to be able to edit the spline. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to play around with the position of these two points to try and get a nice smooth curve, and that will be the curve at the end of the skateboard. Uh, I think I'm pretty happy with that. That looks okay. You can spend a bit more time trying to make it a, a nice smooth curve if you want to. But by just having those two points there, it gives you a bit of adjustment as to the shape of the curve. And um, the ends will join nicely because we put those two tangent constraints in there. Now I want this line to be repeated over this side as well. So I'm going to mirror it. So I'm going to use the mirror tool. So left click on the mirror tool. I need to select a mirror line. I'm going to use the edge of the uh, right work plane and then I'm going to mirror that curve. So I should now have a shape um, that's made up of these two sections. So I'm just going to spin that around slightly because what we want to do now is to delete or remove these two parts. So we're going to go to the extrude tool and we're going to select remove and we could put a depth of 25 millimeters and blind or we could just say uh, through all and just left click to confirm and then we've got that nice shape. Now what I need to do now is I want one of those over here. Now I could repeat that whole process but let's just mirror that part. Okay so I'm going to left click on mirror. It is a part mirror at the moment because it's an individual part and the two parts won't be connected and uh, we're going to create a new part. So the entity to mirror or what we're going to mirror is what we've drawn so far then left click on the mirror plane so I can select the mirror plane and that's going to be the front work plane so there we have two parts if you look down here in the bottom left we have two parts created the next step is going to be to join those together so I'm just going to left click on the tick to confirm that and we're now going to create a, another sketch uh, or two that will allow us to uh, unite those parts so first of all I'm just going to spin this around and on one end, it doesn't really matter which end I suppose, but on this face I'm going to right click and then left click on new sketch. We're going to turn this into a new sketch and then I'm going to use the uh, project or convert tool and if I select the face it sh picks up all four of those. So we've now got sketch four which is the four edges of that face and I'm happy with that so I'm going to left click. I'm now going to zoom out using the scroll wheel on the mouse and I'm going to zoom into the other end Again, I'm going to right click on that face, left click on new sketch, and then use the convert tool and click on that face. Make sure all of the four lines have been selected, which they have. So I've now got sketch five, which is a rectangle on that face, and I'm going to left click uh, to confirm that. And finally, I'm going to draw a new sketch on the front plane. So I'm going to right click on the front plane, left click on new sketch and then uh, press N to normalize it. Uh, now, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in a dotted line because it will probably make things a bit easier with a construction line to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to use the line tool and I'm going to use the construction uh, toggle to turn it into a dotted line. I'm going to go from the origin, and I'm going to go straight up, and I'm going to let go and I'm going to dimension that. Now if you've got a, if you click and then click it'll try and do a multi-line just press escape to end it. If you click and drag it will do a single line. Use the dimension tool and I'm going to just dimension the length of that line and it's going to be 495 millimeters. So type in 495 on the keyboard, hit enter and I can use the scroll wheel or I can right click and then select zoom to fit from the menu. Uh, so that this line doesn't count as part of the sketch, but it, it is part of a sketch. It allows us to create other parts from it, but it doesn't count as part of the sketch when we're applying a feature to it. 
I'm now going to use the circle tool, center point circle. I'm going to start the circle at the top of our 495 line and just drag a circle out and then I'm going to do another one starting from the same point and drag a smaller circle out. I'm not worried about getting too close to these because we're going to dimension them. Then use the dimension tool. First bigger circle wants to have a diameter of 1000 millimeters or radius of 500 and the second circle wants a uh, a diameter of 980 millimeters so just type that in on the keyboard hit enter and that's basically going to be our profile uh, for our curve in the deck I'm now going to use the line tool I'm just going to hover over here to somewhere towards sort of the edge of our skateboard and I'm just going to draw a vertical line up that goes over those two lines so it's vertical and it's just cutting across those two lines I'm going to dimension that so I'm going to go from our center line again and I'm going to dimension to there and that's going to be 95 millimeters so 95 hit enter and just to save myself having to put another dimension in I'm going to mirror that so I'm going to go mirror select the mirror line which is our construction line select the line that I've drawn and it's done another one over there I'm now going to trim the parts that I don't want so just turn off the mirror and use the trim tool which is the pair of scissors so I'm just going to click on the inner circle outside of the shape and as you can see that's taken off this side because it goes all the way around and I'm going to trim the top of the line and the bottom of the line on the left and the top of the line and the bottom of the line on the right so we've now, if I spin that around, got a shape that's a, a bit of a curve uh, with some straight edges. And that's the profile shape that I want. So I'm now going to left click to confirm that. So that's drawn in the middle. So the next tool we're going to use is the loft tool. So this is the loft. It, it looks like a shape that's got a circular top and a, a square bottom. So we can use the loft tool and we can then select our profiles so the first profile I'm going to select is profile 5 the second profile that I'm going to select is profile 6 and the last one I'm going to select is profile 4 so we've got the order of 5, 6, 4 now if you click them in the wrong order you can actually rearrange the profiles so if I just come out and zoom in you can see that what it's done is it's created a shape that's gone from our left hand rectangle to our curve then to our right hand rectangle as it's drawn so I'm just going to left click to select that uh, and you can see that we've got that shape there of a nice kind of skateboard however at the moment it's in three parts so the last thing to do is I'm just going to drag the mouse pointer over all of them and I'm going to use the boolean uh, tool and basically I want to unite those union part three part two part one I want them all to be the same part left click and you'll now see over here we just have a single part and that's the end of the first tutorial that's the basic deck drawn have a go for yourselves in the next tutorial we'll add some features to the deck like holes for mounting the trucks on and also uh, putting a bit of a fillet around the edge uh, so that um, the trucks could be bolted to it and so that it's nice and smooth on the edges and there aren't any kind of hard corners that are going to catch and break